Hi, welcome back to the Cosmic Classroom. We'll now talk about the evidence for dark matter that comes from spiral galaxies, comes from rotation curves of spiral galaxies. And you'll understand what the rotation curve is in a minute. So let's start by looking at what happens in the solar system. We talked about Kepler's law before. Let's see um, what can we learn from the solar system. So here I have a picture, a sketch of the solar system. And if you recall Kepler's laws, as planets move further and further away from the sun, the velocity of the planets slow down. They are less accelerated, therefore they slow down. They are not moving as fast. So a rotation curve is a plot that shows the mean distance from some object, in this case from the sun. So it's probably hard to re read, so I'll here it for read it for you. This is the mean distance from the sun, in this case, in astronomical units. And this is the orbital speed in kilometers per second, how fast they are moving around the, around the sun. Well, Mercury is very close to the sun. It's moving the fastest, Ven then followed by Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and so forth. The velocity depends on the mass of the sun and how far the object is from uh, the sun. So a couple of things to notice from the solar system. Number one is as the objects move are, are further and further from the sun, they travel slower. And also, if you look at the solar system, what you can see, the light that you can see, is coming from the sun, right? Pretty much everything is coming from the sun. And it's also true that the mass in the solar system is also concentrated in the sun. So most of the mass in the solar system is in the same place as the light is. Everything is in the sun. Light distribution and matter distribution go together. All right? Now, let's keep this in mind and step to a much larger scale and think about our galaxy, the Milky Way. So, this is a sketch of the Milky Way. I can only show you a sketch of the Milky Way as we can't leave it to take a picture of it. Um, so, this is the center of the Milky Way where most of the luminosity is. So it's similar in a way to the solar system where the sun would be here, except that in here there are hundreds of billions of stars, right? And the sun is just one of them. The sun is orbiting the Milky Way galaxy and it takes about 230 million years to go around and it's about 28,000 light years away from the center of the Milky Way. So we know how fast the sun is moving. We know how far away it is from the center of this distribution. Therefore, we can compute the mass of the galaxy inside this radius. So we can compute all the mass that's inside this uh, yellow circle, and that's making the sun go around. This turns out to be about 10 to the 11 times the mass of the sun. 100 billion times the mass of the sun, all right? Now, if we were to count the stars, and we know how luminous the stars are, we know the relationship between luminosity and mass, we could also compute the mass that comes from stars alone. And the mass that comes from stars alone is significantly lower than that, right? Instead of being 100 billion, it's 15 billion. So apparently there is much more mass there than we can see from uh, stars. We can continue doing uh, computing the mass by looking at stars further away from the center of the galaxy. Let's say I pick a star right, right here, measure how fast it's moving. I know the distance from that star to the center of the galaxy and I can compute that again. So if we go to the edge of the Milky Way, we have 200 billion times the mass of the sun. Now, the light that you see is obviously not that much more, right? There isn't as much light here as there is inside. But apparently there is as much mass here outside the yellow circle than there is inside the yellow circle. All right. And we can push this even further and measure it way out here where you can't see stars but you can see clouds of gas, you can see hydrogen. And 
do the same thing, measure the velocity, know how far away it is, and then we, it turns out that there is one trillion times the mass of the sun. So it's 10 times more mass than the, than the mass that's right here inside this yellow circle. Your eye can definitely not see that. So if we were to plot a rotation curve for the Milky Way, we see that the speed never really goes down. You know, after you get about uh, a, few kilo, a few kiloparsecs away from the center of the galaxy, all stars are traveling at about the same speed. That's very different from the, from the solar system where the planets were traveling slower as they got further from the center of the solar system. So that's evidence that the mass must be spread out, all right? So the mass is spread out, but the light from stars is concentrated. So most of the mass must be dark. Most of the mass is what we call dark matter. We don't know it. It's not stars and it's not gas. Now we can also do that for other galaxies. We use the, the red shifts to measure the velocity of galaxies, measure how fast they are moving. And we can do that for many other spiral galaxies and draw rotation curves. And it's always true that the speed doesn't think, the speed of stars further away from the center of the galaxy never seems to come down as we would expect if uh, similar to the solar system. And we do that for M33 and we do that for many other galaxies and they never see the, the stars slow down. This is the evidence for dark matter from, from galaxies. And that leads us to a model in which the luminous part of the galaxy, this is the same image that I showed you before, but we are zooming way out, lives in the center of a much, mid, much larger galaxy. We only see the luminous matter, but that seems to be a big halo of dark matter where this, this luminous matter lives. And that, dark, and that halo we can't see. We can't see in any part of the spectrum, all right? So that's the evidence for the existence of dark matter in galaxies. It's observed in all spiral galaxies. And I hope that helped you understand it.